that has a standing army within two hours can put 200,000 troops on our ground. Europe can't do it. Russia can't do it. And by the way, ain't doing real good getting along Well, that's what they the do Russia. in Red Dawn is they dress Cubans up like Mexicans, fly them in on jumbo jets with the noses popping off. And, 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 and used to, I'd say this is crazy, even though I knew the Soviets had a plan to do this. But the thing is, they're so crazy, Obama's now renaming mountains like a dictator. I mean, they're just getting us ready. That was one of the things that we did under Clinton. Clinton would say, well, how am I going to hide this? I'll say, put it right under their nose. That's where nobody will find it. Put it right there. Nobody will believe it. When we say things, Alex, think about the things you have said. Think about the things I've said with you over the years. Remember when they were said that was crazy? That was even crazy. That was so far. Well, I know they're thinking about martial law. That's admitted. And I know the White House is trying to start a race war. I mean, who knows what's going to happen next? America, the United States has had it good so long. We've had our share of problems that we think we're immune and say it can't happen here. It is happening here. Europe has hundreds of thousands of people a month pouring into it. They're declaring civil emergencies in the Czech Republic, stopping all westbound trains. They're being called racist by Germany and England, saying let everyone in. France foreign minister says just take unlimited, pay for it, put people in your house. This is their political takeover. I'm not against the immigrants. They're just being used as the weapon. So the globalists are turning ISIS and Al-Qaeda loose to run around and murder everybody. And then they're on the news this weekend, the White House, like, and others, yeah, we've got to start doing something about ISIS. They're with Iran. We're going to bomb Assad. Knowing the public doesn't understand that Iran and Obama are fighting ISIS. And I'm not saying Iran's good, but they're lying to you. I have the articles right here. In just four years, half of Syrian population of 22 million has been killed, displaced, or fled the country. Four million refugees. And then it ties into this article. Russia to begin airstrikes against ISIS in Syria. Russian presence is there. They've sent hundreds of Russian pilots and aircraft to a forward operating base outside Damascus and are going to start now attacking ISIS. So we heard Russia was fleeing and leaving. That was all disinformation. And we're in the position of Russia fighting the most vicious Islamic extremist ever that our government's allied with, and they go on the news and act like Obama's fighting it. What I'm saying is, I studied Iran-Contra. I studied other corrupt events. Nothing was ever one-tenth of this. This is so gopher-broke, so... Just huge. It, it, it's so flagrant. It's so reckless. It's so naked. It's so wild. Just like all these, it's admittedly George Soros White House run with people chanting approved stuff to kill cops. I mean, the White House knows it's going to cause innocent cops to be shot. <laughs> I mean, I know they're villainous, but who wants to just randomly kill cops or anybody for that matter? Because they want to bring this country down, folks. They call us bitter clingers. It's on. And they want to get the police maneuvered into a position to try to come after our guns, which they're now calling for on MSNBC. You know, it is time to confiscate them. They say we don't want their guns. We played the clip yesterday. We do want them. Time to take them. I want all those reporters and all the social engineers to know something, all the bankers. You think you're going to be immune from all this and the citizens and the cops we're all just going to kill each other because we're a bunch of idiots. You are the ones that are going to be held accountable. I'm going to talk to Larry Nichols about that and talk to Peter. And then talk to Doug and then Joshua and then Mike and then Michael. And I'm going to go to all of you to so stay there. Larry Nichols is here with us. We went up and interviewed him for a couple days up there in Arkansas. It's very powerful, in-depth. That's going to be airing in the next two weeks. I don't know if I'll air it during the 27-hour broadcast because that is a big audience, but almost not as big as if I just showcase it before then and uh, put it on the nightly news or something. But it's going to be airing the next week or two. Uh, before I go any further, we brought game-changing, over-the-top, important nutraceuticals to the table at extremely affordable prices that also help fund this operation. And we do deserve your support. We've gotten your support. But folks know we're on a serious mission to quote, quote the Blues Brothers, we're not backing off, we're taking action, and we also bring great products to the table, and I want to thank you all for your support, uh, for 
your patronage, whether it's oxy powder to flush out your guts or Prostagard for your prostate, uh, or whether it's silver bullet, colloidal silver, it's all super high quality. But the, one of the biggest game changers is true, organic, high quality, deep earth iodine that so many people have a deficiency in. And it's not just your thyroid, it's other glands. Your whole body basically operates on this. And beyond even the B12 that works great and other things and super male, this is what I started taking first three years ago when we were developing it that is the game changer. And you will detox in two to four weeks, in my experience. Talk to your physician because it'll it'll push out a bunch of bad stuff out of your thyroid. So be ready. But it's at InfoWarsLife.com. Read the five-star reviews. InfoWarsLife.com. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And you allow us to defeat the slings and arrows. You allow us to... I need to get some more reporters. I need to get three or four more. I need to get more writers. I need to hire about 10 people. And we don't have the money to do that right now. We have the money to go up on satellites and do things like that. Uh, we have the money bomb coming up. We need to raise money. And I just, you, we don't have time to wait. Just if you want to donate at infowars.com forward slash money bomb, we, we usually start doing that a few weeks before and build it up to hopefully reach our goal. But uh, it's very expensive to do news like this, very expensive to get the word out like this. But we're doing it thanks to your support with high quality products, the old fashioned free market way. So whether it's a mini cook stove or a shortwave radio or a Made in America Pro Gun shirt uh, or a Navy SEAL manufactured bottle opener that says 1776 on it, all the knickknacks, all the survival stuff, all the storable food, all the highest quality at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. We got the women's Molon Lambe shirts, all of it, InfoWarsStore.com or Made1776.com for the Made in America uh, apparel line. Uh, Larry Nichols, we're going to keep getting you up every few weeks. We've got a special report coming up. I want to go to some calls. They'll be all over the map, but you can speak to it as a former Politico and a smart cookie. Um, we're talking about the clear destabilization, the clear insanity, the clear fact they're trying to get a race war going in this country. Do you think they're being successful? What do you think the next shoe to drop is? What else is on Larry Nichols' radar? Oh, wow. Well, first off, yes, they're going to be successful. They're being very successful at it. And it's easy to do when you are in America today, like we were in Arkansas during my time with Bill Clinton. We controlled the press. So if you control the press, press, guess what, Alex? You control what people hear, how many times they hear it. And if you keep telling them a lie long enough, it becomes true. So you can tell yeah. them that uh, the North Pole's warm and sunny. Guarantee it. Guarantee it, I've done it. Now, I would say to everybody about this program, folks, you better hear Alex when he's telling you, because I hope you understand. I got, there's nothing to me with Alex. I'm not a part of his network or anything, but I'm going to tell you, we're on a short fuse. This thing is coming down right before our eyes. Now, I'll give you another little tip. You know, Alex, this whole thing with Iran, and I hear about, all that's going on and what's actually in the agreement. Number one, folks, Congress at any time it wants can hold a session and they can vote and say, guess what? This isn't an agreement. This is a treaty. And therefore, the president has zero ability to affect a treaty without getting congressional approval. Number one. Number two, if you don't think we're being betrayed and if you don't think it's out in the open, every member of Congress knows that when they did the corker, treasonous bill that what that did it didn't stop obama from his iran agreement now folks hear me well on this it didn't stop it it shut off the only way there was to stop this agreement if you come out and find out that iran has been given the keys to washington dc there's nothing anybody can do thanks to the corker bill which is going to allow every member of commerce to vote, quote, end quote, against the agreement, right? So they're going to get their little snippet that they can use in their commercials and their little ads saying, well, I was against it. But they actually voted for the one thing that could have stopped it. You see, with the Corker bill, they fixed it to where our government can't stop Obama because they're going to vote. Everybody's going to get a chance to say, see, we were against it. I was against it. Don't be mad at me. But then Obama vetoed it. Had the Corker bill not been done, 
when the agreement finally came out, and if it does ever come out, it'll be over. He can't do anything about it. They could stop it, but now they can't stop it. They don't have enough votes to override his veto. And what is the point of letting Iran get nuclear weapons? Because I'm not just here bashing Iran. I'm not an Islamophobe. Uh, but we know Pakistan's handing out nukes in the, in the Middle East already. We know Saudi Arabia's got them. Uh, from my intel, Iran's had nukes for a while, just not delivery systems. They have, they what have. is all this really about? It's about destabilizing the Middle East and allowing Obama. I know y'all going to think I'm crazy again, but look at his actions, not at his words, please. This is allowing Obama to introduce himself to the world of Islam, Islam as being the absolute leader. You see, for the first time, you're going to be able, the people, the Islamic people in the Middle East are going to be able to say, hey, Obama, he's our guy. He has done what no other person of Islam has ever been able to do, and that is to conquer the great eagle from the West. Now, Alex, that's a big thing, buddy. That's a big thing. And then when people say to me, well, all this stuff you're talking about with Cuba, that can't be real. You're just making it up. And just like you said, Alex, this stuff that we're going through now is so much bigger than Contras and Iran. Hey, I was in. I, I was in Nicaragua. You're talking to a guy that was actually there. This is so big. This has taken America down a road that we, the bad guys could have only dreamed of back then. Back then, if you remember, Alex, I was in the middle of trying to stop something called the domino theory, where communists would move up through Nicaragua, then it would take Honduras, then Mexico, and then here. They're already here. And we have no idea, Alex, how many of them are here. Well, I'll tell you what, I knew something was going on. They always say communism doesn't exist as we adopt it. And then suddenly the last two years, the last year, I'll be at a restaurant or I'll be just anywhere and the communists show up in red flags and are running around calling for killing cops right in front of me. I mean, I've caught it on video and it's like suddenly they're, they're coming out of their holes. They're suddenly activating. Alex, the other day I hear from you and a few other media that Farrakhan came out calling for 10,000 brave souls to go out and kill 100,000. Now, was he talking about 100,000 whites or was he talking about 100,000 cops? I don't know. But once again, guys, all I can ask you is think about if Alex or I, either one, were to make loose comments like that, what would happen to us? Plus, we don't want to make that comment. I would never make it, and I know you would. You know, yeah, but, believe but, it or but, not, but if we did, we'd be arrested because it's a call to action. I'm sorry? Because it's a call to action. It was. And, you know, I'm introducing a plan. I'm trying to get a plan, trying to get one state to pick it up. Alex, you and I will talk about it all fair, but basically it's a call for states' rights. If we don't have states' rights now, if some state, one state does not stand up and declare – you know, the rights of a state to make its own laws, we're lost. Washington's gone. Absolutely. Washington it's all about branding states' rights as racist and getting us all fighting with each other so nobody can come together and fight to restore the republic from the globalist takeover. And then Louis Farrakhan one time plugged me like I was great when I told Piers Morgan 1776 would happen if they wanted the guns. It's almost like he's not controlled, but he wants a revolution or something. Because we have the clip, we just put it on screen, where he did say we need to rise up and start killing people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what is Farrakhan looking to do? I mean, this is crazy. Does he know what's going to happen in a race war? I mean, it's Alex, not going to be pretty. Alex, that's the whole point to all of this. Obama, Farrakhan, Sharpton, all these people are talking. They know what they're doing, Alex. This whole thing evolves everybody getting together and causing the race war. Because why? Because that creates the national crisis that allows them to cash in FEMA. And when FEMA's done, they're all being told they'll have high positions of power, I'm sure. But they all better look at Obama's history. When that man has gotten where he's wanted to go, everybody that helped him get there, he threw under the bus. If you don't believe me, ask what's your name, the, the black lady with the TV show, whatever. I mean, he's thrown everybody, 
everybody under the bus that helped him get where he's going, and he will do the same. And for those people that say, well, Obama's not a Muslim. He says he's a Christian. Well, he also